yeah hi everyone um i'm tapas kumar mohanty i'm working with i'm as the informatics and data science lies officer so i look after the uh, open science uh, data sharing of uh, seven lmics since we are working with uh, seven southeast asian lmics and uh, uh, we have our own um, uh, project run uh, through the university of edinburgh since i uh, i'm working there so that that's why i have chosen uh, this template to make all these logos uh, visible over here uh, so i think everyone knows what is open source hardware the same presentation i have presented during uh, one of the um, one of the uh, conference in the and I'll just uh, uh, go through the next slide. So uh, before I'll just reiterate is open source hardware is whose design can be publicly made available and then everyone can study, modify, distribute, make, sell, and design. So how we got inspired. So last year I have attended uh, one of the open source uh, open Research, uh, Edinburgh Open Research Conference, uh, which happened in the University of Edinburgh. I joined virtually. Uh, from there, I saw one nice presentation by Pen Yuan, uh, so who is uh, one of the GOSH council member, and uh, I get connected with him. So then uh, I met with Bree through GOSH. I connected with PTB Berlin. So uh, from there, we got the inspiration. Initially, we thought of having one uh, open source pulse oximeter, but while discussing within our team, our team were more optimistic. They said, why don't we make another big thing which can be useful for Indian context? So we thought of making one MRI scanner. So what is MRI? MRI full form is, uh, MRI stands for magnetic resonance imaging. So the magnets and radio waves, they, they create detailed picture of the inside of a person which is quite crucial for wide range of medical conditions, let's say injuries or traumas, uh, tumors. And it has got no harmful radiation if you compare with other uh, devices. So there are certain problems that we wanted to chip in over here. So uh, the timely access is crucial for diagnosis, diagnosing injuries. Uh, uh, road accidents. Since the population of India is quite, quite high, if you see the traffics are quite uh, more and, and uh, accidents are happening now and then. So um, in rural areas, th there are lack of MRE facilities because of the cost limitations. And the X-rays cannot detect the uh, diagnosing injuries, I mean internal injuries, internal bleeding. So, uh, and more MRIs are more expensive, scarce, and not accessible at all. I mean, there are tertiary care hospitals where these are available and which are far from the villages. And then limited scientific equipment uh, available in Southeast Asia. We need to rely on imports specifically, let's say, uh, from other countries uh, and which are more costlier to import. And the solution we found, like the open source imaging, uh, which we call OSI21, which help in uh, which will help in enabling the equipment at the primary healthcare centers. It's easier for transporting uh, because the portable in nature. So the accident sites can have the device in rural location. It can it can help in uh, diagnosing the injuries like traumatic brain injuries makes MRI technology more accessible for low resource settings. And it, is, it uses the open source scientific equipments and tools. So what about, I'll just tell some background about OSI. So one of the first prototype was presented at the ISMR, um, uh, which was held in 2022 in London. And there were other replications happened uh, in Netherlands, Uganda, and Germany. So what we are trying to have it uh, with the uh, help of our research center where, where I'm based in uh, over here, which is KM Hospital Research Center. And we have also find out two labs which uh, will help us to do that. It is, uh, I'll, I'll uh, also talk about the VSS UT Burla, Odisha. 
so which is uh, the eastern part of india so they are going to help us with replicating and uh, assembling process so i'll just tell about the km hospital so it's a tertiary level hospital it it has been established since 1912 so it it is the uh, it serves the pune urban and rural area in the western belt of india it has got 550 bedded uh, institution where we are planning to have put our uh, mri scanner soon after the assembly for the phase 2 trial so it started in 1973. This is our research center. So the research part is based in a rural area, uh, which called uh, Vadu. And it has got uh, two uh, centers. One is tribal area and one is uh, Vadu Rural Health Program. And it has got uh, covering 1.58 uh, million people, for the, uh, out of which one, one, uh, uh, one lakh 80,000 individuals have been uh, followed up through the longitudinal uh, SDSS system, the um, health and demographic system. So we have got a team, like for the timing, we have identified these team members, but we are adding some more team members because this is, a, this is not an easy task. So uh, for identification of lab, we have discussed with VSS uh, uh, University of Technology, which is based in Eastern India. So uh, Professor Bandan Kumar Boy, who is in this call as well. So he is the lab head and technical expert who is going to have their own team over there in, in their uh, university to have the assembly of the open source MRI. Ratiranjan Senapati, who will be looking after most of the technical parts uh, on troubleshooting and quality assurance. Tathagata, who is my uh, line manager and he is a software developer. So he will going to look after the software part. Udhavi is also there. Udhavi is mostly looking at the documentation and knowledge sharing and she will be looking at the human centric approach. And her role would be more uh, crucial during the trials because she will be taking the qualitative interviews of different stakeholders and uh, uh, the patients uh, for, for, for the experience and, uh, and to see how it, the things are going over here. So we have Dr. Rijia Joseph in our team, so who is a study physician who is currently has got more grip on uh, regulatory trials, like clinical trials. So he'll be ensuring the safety and regulatory approvals because we all know uh, medical devices um, treated like drug and clinical trials. So for that, we need more documentation in India. And I'll be there, I'll be looking after uh, the overall coordination since uh, I um, I have already connected with uh, the technical institutions and there are other parts like uh, in Kerala, which is the southern part of India. So they have done some feasibility study. So we are also looking into those aspects as well. Uh, for the overview, since it's quite technical one, so I would request Rati Ranjan and Bandhan, if you can just come up and tell some details about uh, the same. Anyone can... Uh, Please thank you, feel Tapas. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Tapas. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'll present the basic technical details of the MRI. Uh, I can see in this diagram there are the magnets, uh, 3D printing structure. This is the uh, images, and these are the RF coils. Actually, MRI consists of uh, mainly three parts: um, permanent magnets, then gradient coil, and radio frequency amplifier. Uh, if this is the uh, you can see this the 3D structure where our magnets will be placed. Uh, our basically our human body consisting of hydrogen atoms and these atoms are rotating along its axis and they are also randomly oriented. Hi, so Bandon, I'm sorry to interrupt. You sound a, a little bit far away. Um, I didn't know if there's any way um, that you could sound like a, a little bit louder. Um, it's just a little hard to hear. Uh, now audible? Yeah, that's much better. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, I'm telling the technical details of this MRA. Uh, the human body consists of mainly hydrogen atoms and these atoms are rotating along its axis and they are randomly oriented. So when magnetic fields are applied to our human body, uh, these hydrogen atoms are aligned with the applied magnetic field B0. That magnetic field is also called B0. Its strength is minus sorry, 0.5 Tesla to 3 Tesla. Uh, so due to certain limitation of the 3D structure, 
these magnetic fields are not homogeneous across the body. So to maintain the homogeneous magnetic field, another magnetic field is applied through a coil, which is called radiant coil, which is a magnetic field. And when where the magnetic field is not homogeneous across the body, it will be applied to maintain the homogeneous. So after maintaining the homogeneous magnetic field, then radio frequency generator is used. The radio frequency generator is applied using high frequency signals. And because of this high frequency signal, our hydrogen atoms of the body are now aligned with the applied radio frequency field. So when this radio frequency field is uh, up after some time, then the hydrogen atoms, which are aligned uh, along the applied magnetic field, they'll try to move to into their other position according to the RF field. So when RF field is now up, that atoms are now coming back to the original position. And this time required to coming back to original position is called relaxation time. So this relaxation time is two types, one is T1, another is T2. T1 is longitudinal direction and T2 is vertical direction of the uh, hydrogen atoms. So these times will be calculated through a Fourier transform formula and that will be generated image through the computing system and it will display on the display board. So in this way, we'll uh, find the image of the corresponding body. Uh, okay, this is the basic details of our MRI. Uh, Tapas, can you come continue? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Bandhan. Uh, so, Professor Bandhan have um, uh, give, given a brief, but I would like to add some more things. So, uh, for this, um, this will cost around uh, 20,000 euros. So, we have a dialogue with uh, the PTB uh, Berlin. So, we will be having the equipment uh, over here uh, during the assembly time. Some of the things will be made at uh, VSS uh, uh, um, uh, University of Technology where uh, Professor Bandhan is based and their students are going to help them. And we are also having uh, uh, open source software tools which will enhance the images since uh, as Bandhan uh, mentioned that it is uh, low uh, field magnets like 15 mil 50 millitesla. So it requires further enhancement. So for that we'll be having the open source software uh, to enhance those images. So uh, this will help us to gain experience and um, and 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 to support the LMICs with the MRI designs. Since I am working with the LMICs, and and it will also help us to have collaborative effort for the social scientists and medical professionals and and ensuring the regulatory standards. So this this is a milestone that we have prepared. So uh, we have already done our networking and. Uh, team uh, in place uh, in in february next year we have in person training where we all will be going uh, along with bandhan and his team to have hands on experience of how the things are happening and the r and d lab uh, will be uh, doing the replication in the year 2026 and the uh, year 2027 will be having the uh, unit ready and will be uh, having the trials done by, with the help of the km hospital research center uh, after having the regulatory approvals. So uh, leveraging these learnings the, that we are envisaging like for, for our skill development will happen and collaborative research culture will also be uh, doing that. And we, we are uh, hopeful that it will have a broader societal impact. Uh, at last, I would like to uh, have one quote from Luis Pasha, like science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and is the torch where illuminates the world. So thank you. If there are any questions, so we are ready to answer.